So lots to talk about with our guest host, Nicholas Ferris of eSpring Investments, joining us throughout the entire program. Very nice to see you. Thank you so much for coming in. So this shock move by the uh, SNB, what do you make of it? Well, I think the timing's a little bit curious, and given that I've, my understanding is that 48 hours ago they were not thinking about doing that or changing it. But I, my guess is they probably got their heads up from the ECB, mm. that the ECB is likely to do something fairly large. Yeah, even uh, the reaction from global leaders uh, has been quite curious in light of the fact that Christine Lagarde was saying she was a bit surprised because she didn't hear anything about it as well. So uh, the ECB taking such an abrupt and aggressive uh, action, does this mean that the ECB is going to roll out a major bazooka, maybe to the tune of one or two trillion euros? Well, it's quite possible. I think they need to do at least a trillion euros um, mm. to get the balance sheet back to where it was previously. I mean, and, and because of that, going back to the SNB, um, their balance sheet was getting very large. I think it was, it's around about 85% of uh, Swiss GDP. Mm. So um, if that occurred, they would need to keep, you know, in order to defend the peg, they would need to keep on buying and, and more euro assets. And that's arguably a little bit irresponsible. Yeah, so we're in this peculiar environment where the uh, the safe havens, uh, if you want to invest in anything that is perceived as a safe haven, you actually have to pay, whether you look at two-year or the short-dated German bonds and half of European bonds, and now you've got even the Swiss franc. So they not only uh, got rid of the ceiling for the currency, but also cut rates. So if you're paying anywhere between 75 and 80 basis points if you want to hold on to the currency right. for uh, about three months and beyond. Um, how much is this going to cost them in light of the fact that the wall of money is still going to keep on piling in? Quite possibly. I mean, we'll have to see how the price action plays out, and depending on what the ECB does. But probably the more important thing is to think about what it means for risk assets. Mm. And, um, you know, that's a, a question we've been contemplating for a little while now. Um, I'm still reasonably bullish or constructive on risk assets. I think, you've, you know, for, partly for that reason that central bank action is like, likely to continue. I mean, it's even possible that, that the Fed actually expands, does more QE this year rather than raising rates. You think the Fed could actually ease, then we're back to the era of easy monetary it's, policy. It's, but it's then possible. why is the RBI cutting rates? Because that has many debating whether this is, marks the start of EM loosening. Well, I think it does. I think you are going to get more, probably more policy easing in EM as well. And that's, mm. you know, that, that was clearly positive in India yesterday. It's the, the disinflation is actually a good thing in my view. So I don't necessarily see the, the, the collapse in commodity prices as a, as a bearish signal for growth or risk mm. assets. So, uh, but, but, but wait a minute, I don't understand. The fact, the fact remains that the Fed will probably high grades mid-year, June or July, or have the retail sales figures or recent U.S. data, uh, have that disappointed to the tune, uh, to, to the point that maybe the Fed might uh, be more patient than expected? Not, not yet. It's not to that point yet, but certainly the wage growth, you know, the, the, the wage numbers overall, the trend, um, the, the trend there and the trend in inflation suggests at the very least they're going to be patient and it may get pushed out. And growth, I'm not bearish on growth in the US, I think it's actually been fine. It's just that it's not creating wage pressure mm -hmm. or, or inflation, and therefore the Fed can probably remain patient. If, it, if growth did deteriorate, then they might consider doing more QE. So if uh, we're back to the era of QE and more QE across the pond, and even Asia jumping in, uh, risk assets, especially equities rally, and plus bonds rally as well, the well, same right. thing I mean, as 2014? That's right. I think there's really three things. The, the first point is that valuation is very strong. Oh, sorry, very, very attractive. Mm. Um, growth is still strong enough that, that it's reasonable for profits. We've certainly seen material downgrades over the last three months, about 5% in the U.S., um, and, and broadly, clearly that's um, energy related. Um, and, then, and then the third point is that there, there, there is a possibility of, of more central bank easing globally. 